More, more discussion on the war in Ukraine. We are joined now by Marcos Kunalakis. He's a visiting fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institute. Um, good evening, Marcos. So here we are tonight at this terrible moment as Ukraine is in the throes of war, invaded by Russia. I mean, is this thing that we should have seen coming a long time ago? Well, we've seen it coming. I mean, we've seen the uh, aggression that the Russian, uh, that Russia under Putin, because it really is a Putin-led uh, effort. We've seen it in Georgia. We've seen it in other parts of Ukraine, whether it's the Donbas or in Crimea. So it's this constant move by Putin to take what he can and to expand territorially and to make claims on things that aren't his. Marcos, as you know, this is different, though. Uh, Putin kind of went in quickly in those instances. There was bloodshed, but nothing like what we have seen. And you fear for the future with uh, the convoy of Russian troops lined up for what is to come in the days and weeks ahead. What is your best prognostication on you know, how committed Putin is to taking the country at all costs and what that means globally? Well, from everything I've seen, and you're right, from everything I've seen, he's all in. I mean, it doesn't seem like when you look at a convoy of that size heading to the capital city that he's withdrawing or, or having uh, second thoughts about this. It is significant. And for anyone who's sitting in, in Ukraine and, and committed to defending their own nation, it's got to be as if you're facing the Death Star. I mean, it is massive. And you're right, those previous uh, incursions, those previous wars, uh, un, un, uh, there was one that was pretty significant and pretty painful in Chechnya, but some of the other ones were not as large. Ukraine is a, is a nation of almost 45 million people, and he is, he is dead set on taking it over. So you did use an analogy, which, you know, we all love an underdog story. And um, th this, this does seem to be the, the evil empire that um, the, the, the rebels are going up against. How do you seeing this actually play out in the end? Uh, well, certainly, I, I commend and I'm, I'm just moved by the actions of the president, President Zelensky, who recently visited California, uh, and, and uh, Petro Poroshenko, who is also a, a former president of Ukraine. The fact that they're out there, that they haven't just gotten out of town, and many of us may remember that when the Taliban was heading into Kabul, the president of Afghanistan you know, hit the road. Uh, it is it is just heartening to see what people are ready to do to defend their homes, their families, their nation. Uh, but it is uh, going to be and continue to likely be a very bloody, very painful uh, war against uh, these forces that that are just enormous and 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 have everything going for them and and the fact that vladimir putin really has no restraint has no conscience when it comes to this what he has in mind is sort of his concept of this larger russian empire you wrote recently about the fact that ukraine had nuclear weapons gave them up uh, what it would mean today if ukraine still had that threat that's right. You know, we know and we, we want to support disarmament. We want to stop, you know, we are for non-proliferation. So when the Soviet Union fell apart, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Ukraine all had nuclear weapons arsenal left over from the Soviet days. They gave them up. And if you look at those three nations now, they are dominated. Uh, at least Belarus is a wholly owned subsidiary of Russia at this point. Kazakhstan is facing its own pressures from Russia, and you see what's happening to Ukraine. They do not have that ultimate deterrent to have kept Putin from thinking about invading. So Putin's back is somewhat up against the wall. I mean, he's getting pushed back from uh, Ukrainians that probably didn't anticipate. But So it seems as though we're entering this Cold War phase, the U.S. and Europe and you know, with Russia. So what's at risk in your view of this Cold War turning into a hot war? Well, I mean, it's already a hot war in Ukraine. If it spreads beyond its borders, you know, we, the United States, President Biden has said we will not engage militarily in Ukraine. It is not a treaty ally. But if it spills over either by design or by accident, 
then all bets are off. And and the worrisome part of it all, of course, is that nu uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin has raised the nuclear uh, threat, and he's raised the stakes already to the highest level. We're not responding uh, with a like kind response in the nuclear frame. But, you know, here's a guy who's willing to say anything and do anything, in part so that he will uh, survive in his role as president of Russia, but in part because he's, he has this goal of, of expanding and of consolidating his power and of, and of someday having, after his name, the great, the way that Peter the Great or Catherine the Great were once uh, are seen in history. He wants to be Vova the Great. I know you recently met with Zelensky. You were a correspondent in Moscow. You, you have vast knowledge of that part of the world. But for a lot of folks you know, here in the Bay Area, it's half a world away. And you know, prior to a few weeks ago, their knowledge of these issues was pretty limited. Why should people here in America and, and maybe more locally here in the Bay care? Well, first of all, locally, you know, we have one of the largest Ukrainian populations in the country, and there, a lot of them are in Sacramento. And certainly if you're in San Francisco and you drive down Gary Boulevard, you'll see the onion domes of the Russian church. So we have a large population that has a relationship to, uh, to, this, to this region. Um, but why should we care about this in a larger sense? Because it is a question of, of, of maintaining the international order, of maintaining the rules that keep us all safe. When, when a country can willy-nilly just take over another country, invade another country, everything that we've been operating, all the rules that we've been operating on since World War II are thrown out the window. And that makes the world a much more dangerous place, not only to live, but to do business and do anything. Uh, and, and so we have to recognize that this moment, what we're witnessing right now, has changed uh, and has created uh, or is the very inception of a new world order and perhaps a wider war. So we, we are running out of time, but I do want to ask you this question. Your boss, Condoleezza Rice, uh, the former um, um, Secretary of State, Secretary of State uh, said yeah. that basically Putin has lost it. Um, He's beyond delusional. I mean, how do you deal with a, a, a character like that, with an actor like that, leading a... Yeah. I think he's got some logic in his own mind, but, uh, but from any rational actor in the West or any other part of the world, it, what he's doing is just not, not sane. And, but, of course, he has a larger vision. He has some logic to what it is he wants to do, and that's what's so dangerous, is that he has no, no moral... Uh, guardrails, no fear, but he's willing to do anything to achieve his goals. And, and so, you know, he looks crazy to us, but in his own mind, he's not. Well, we have to leave it right there. There's so much more to talk about. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Marcos Kunalakis, uh, Stanford Hoover Institution. Have a good evening.